Hi everyone, my name is Veronica Alfonso and welcome again to Hashtag Career Goals where we help you discover the right career for you. Today we're here with Don Pippen and he's actually a recognized by Forbes leading expert, career expert. He's also a certified professional resume writer, certified LinkedIn pro profile expert and has more than 10 years of experience in human resources. And he's also the creator of uh, Area Talent. And thank you so much for being here, Don. Hi, thank you. Thanks so much for having me, Veronica. Yeah, I'm so happy to to be able to do this with you and, and finally connect because we have been talking actually since some months now. <laughs> yes. So good to have you. <laughs> yeah, this pandemic kind of put a, threw a wrench into things for everyone, I believe. Yeah. And well, I can imagine that like, well, we mentioned that before we started recording that you have so much work because there are so many people that are actually looking for jobs right now. So I understand that you can be quite busy. Yes, I am. So uh, it's, thank, I'm thankful for that. Um, and I and I'm happy to be able to help people any any way I can. Of course. Yeah, I can imagine that for you, it's like a thrill because you have a lot of work, but in general, yeah, it's a bit sad that we're going through this. But anyways, I actually wanted to start the conversation with you talking about you, uh, like um, how you started in this career, your beginnings, even where you're from, like tell us your story. Sure. So I live in Los Angeles. But I was born and raised in a small area in the Midwest, in a, in a state, Illinois, uh, and in Peoria, which is a really small farming community. Uh, so after college, I, I went to a small liberal arts college. I moved to Los Angeles. And like most people, I started in entry-level positions. And I worked for in a call center for a Honda Motor mm -hmm. Company. And there I was able to grow and I, I went into management and I started taking on responsibilities around hiring. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, as a manager, you often have the responsibility of performance evaluations and terminations. But one of the best parts of being a hiring manager is also facilitating the hiring process. So throughout that portion of my career, I also took on Uh, our internship program. So I would travel to colleges and universities around the country and recruit people to to intern at Honda Motor Company. So, you know, Honda being quite a large company, we had very stringent requirements or what we were looking for in, in candidates. So I was able to, that's where I started to learn and hone my skills on seeking the talent that was necessary to build a successful organization. And then I moved to a Fortune 50 company, which was Bank of America. And there I had about 500 people that I supported in, uh, in an HR capacity, uh, where I did the hiring, filling in for mostly call center roles. So in a call center environment, it's high turnover. So we're constantly trying to fill 50 mm -hmm. people classes. Um, and... From there, uh, I decided, you know, like this was my passion. You know, I enjoyed the recruiting aspect, but I often saw people who were not branding themselves properly when they were applying to these yeah. positions. Um, you know, their resumes were poorly done. Interviewing, they were very stressed, you know, in an interview process. Uh, and I can it was, imagine you just looking at people and you were like, oh, poor guy. He's so stressed. Yes, yes. And for oh, some of these positions, they were higher level. So we were doing panel interviews. And I don't know how many of you or your viewers or you have been through a panel interview, but they can be very stressful when there's like yeah. seven people looking at you asking questions. So uh, I decided to kind of start a passion project on the side, which was my business which is the business I have today, which is Area Talent, uh, where I was helping people write resumes and prepare them for the interview phase of, of their job search. Uh, so in 2008 uh, is when it really started, and 2012 is when it started to take off. Um, and from there, I, I left and I started my own business Uh, and I went back to school and got my master's in HR. Um, 
and I got my certification as a certified professional resume writer. And one of the things that I learned through my schooling and my resume writing program is there is a definite way you want to present yourself when you're seeking for a job, for any job. And often candidates overlook the smallest thing, which can be a big thing to someone that's you know hiring you. So that's what I, I incorporate in my services when I'm working with clients is to help them get past those barriers that they may not recognize as barriers or they may not even see as a barrier. And often things that clients that come to me that have barriers, those are just mental barriers. They're not actual barriers that we're looking but, at. Um, yeah, definitely. But well, from what you are saying, for me, it's like a bit mind blowing because from what I understand, it's like there are definitely some steps or some particular details that you have to be aware of. And I really thought that when you just um, go into an interview, you have to, of course, know what 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 you like, know your resume, what your experience is, you know how to present yourself, but you also have to be yourself. But yes. apparently there are some things that you also have to be careful with. It's like an exam. I mean, you have to know the little things that where you have to tick. But like, yeah. So I, I didn't know that, actually. And I think till today, I am not an expert. In that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but most it's good that I'm talking to you now. Yeah, that's why most people end up reaching out to a career coach or a resume writer is because they have, you know, hit that mental block and they're not sure how to proceed or they're just, you know, there's a, a lot of ghosting that goes on in the recruiting industry. Someone applies and they don't hear back. And that really can affect your morale as a job seeker. Uh, and so it's, you know, a coach, a, a good coach helps you through that to, to minimize those impacts to your psyche. Yeah. Yeah. And from, from your story, I also, um, can see that you maybe you it wasn't your plan right to be a career coach this it wasn't something no. that you thought when you were 17 and you were like okay let's uh do something with my career and i'm gonna be a career coach <laughs> no you know my degree uh my original degree was in business which is a very mm -hmm. general degree right like what Broad, am i going to do with business yeah. yeah so it's often you know a lot of people get psychology degrees but they don't actually go into psychology so, you know, as a business, having a business degree, I, there are so many things I could do. I'd never thought I would be working in a call center, uh, but it, it ended up being a, a, just a perfect, you know, a perfect storm of events that happened to me that led me to where I am today. Yeah. And the fact that you loved it and in the end, uh, and it was your passion and you saw, you said, okay, this is something that I could do. And you actually made, um, your own project out of it. So that yeah. I think that's, that's amazing. And not many of us have that, like that luck. <laughs> yeah. 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 It definitely so, uh, takes, uh, it takes work. It takes a plan. You have to have a plan. And that's a lot of things, a lot of times what I help clients with. Exactly. Tell me, what do you exactly do? Or more or less, give us a, an overview of what career coaches do, because m many people don't know that. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's actually a pretty large industry um, that is just people don't know about. Uh, but the problem is, is that there are a lot of people in the industry that shouldn't be in the industry. Um, so, uh, but in general, career coaches they help people with career related challenges. That can be someone who's just starting out looking to find a career. It could be someone who's been in a career for a long time and they are frustrated or they've hit their plateau. They have no room for growth. They're looking to change. There are people, uh, sometimes, you know, mothers who have been out of the workforce for a period of time and they're wanting to re enter and it's been, you know, 15, 20 years. And they're not sure how they should capture those last 15, 20 years. What does that look like on a resume? How do you answer that in an in interview? Um, so there, I mean, clients come from all walks of life. Um, they can, they can also be dealing with personnel issues in the workplace. Like maybe they're having trouble working with their boss or their peers or their employee employees. 
So we work on those types of coaching situations too. So um, would you say that many young people actually go for for sessions with career coaches or is this some is this something that usually you get more people that are that want to change companies that want to change uh, industries or moms that want to end re-enter the the working force how is it you know i don't know the actual percentage when it comes to industry wide but for me most of my clients that reach out for career coaching are younger Uh, they're recent graduates and especially right now, you know, like back in 2008, we had the great recession. So anyone who was graduating was having a difficult time finding work. Yeah. Now we're in the pandemic and people who are graduating are having a difficult time finding work. So they, most of the time, the career tech coaching that, that they are really in need of is how can they be a leg up over their competition? And does that mean that they present themselves on LinkedIn differently? Does that mean that they create a different type of resume? Does that mean that they don't use the resume at all and they are they are working on networking? Um, so there are so many different different ways of doing a job search that people don't think of. And and especially young people who are coming right out of college, they haven't had the experience of really searching for jobs. So they're, they, once they hear some different ideas, they're like, I didn't think of that, you know? And even people who've been in the, the job. The stupidest thing probably, like the, the yeah. simplest thing. Yeah. It's the simplest things, and, and, and which I often take for granted myself because I'll often think, well, they probably know this, so I, I'm not going to say this. But the fact is, is they don't, and that's why they're reaching out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, maybe walk us through your sessions, like how are they? What can people expect? Um, but mostly I am interested also in knowing how can people find the right career for them? People that are lost, they don't know what to do. Like, for example, if, if I just graduated in business, it's really broad, right? So I don't really know. I really don't know what I want to do uh, with my career. And like, what can I expect if I tell you, okay, Don, let's just um, have a session here or a few sessions and help me find what I really want to do in life? Yeah. So I, I do want to preface that all coaches operate differently. And there are coaching methodologies that some go by where it is a very formulaic approach. So it doesn't matter if they have five or 10 um, clients, they all go, their sessions are all going to be the same. Yeah. The way that I operate is there is no one unique situ- like um, session. Every ses- mm-hmm. session is different because every client is different. So It, typically in an intake session, I'm going to find out what is the driver for hiring me? Why are you looking out for help? That helps me determine how we should come up with a plan on their job search. So say, for instance, you know, Veronica is looking to do a career jump. You know, she no longer, you no longer want to do podcasts. You know, you, you now want to become a psychologist. So There And I have clients that come to me who have, like, it's not just a short leap, it's a huge jump where we need to build a bridge for them to get from one side to the other. And those don't happen through creating a resume, updating your LinkedIn profile, having a good cover letter. We determine what that plan is going to look like. You know, does that mean you go to school? Does that mean that you use some networks, uh, some connections in your network? Uh, living in Los Angeles, especially in the, with our industry, which is the entertainment industry, um, there are a lot of clients coming to me, especially at this time when the entertainment industry has been shut down. They're looking for a way to approach the market differently. Um, wow. they're, they're used to getting jobs just because of their name or the projects that they've worked on. And now they need to reach out to people who may not know who they are because they aren't the people that they do not know aren't able to help them right now. Yeah. So those are, those are some of the things that we discuss and taught and strategize about in a session. 
Um, and then sessions can go on from you know, typically 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, and we can have, you know, a minimum of five sessions to unlimited sessions. It really, it's very much like therapy. If you've ever gone to therapy, um, it's, I, haven't, but I guess I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's tailored to your need and how many sessions that you feel you need as a coach. It is not my job to tell you how many sessions you need. It is my job to facilitate and support you in your decision making process. So if that if you're able to do that in a session, great. If you're able to do that in ten sessions, okay. Yeah. And I guess people would realize if they need more sessions just because they, they feel happy with what they have accomplished and they feel that okay, I, I reached to that goal, to that point where I wanted to where I wanted to be. I guess this is something that you all also help them with, just to set the goals of where where they want to be. If not then yes. just doing stuff without a, a like a north on and, and yeah. point of where you can reach. Yeah. And and to also kind of answer your question on how does how does someone know what type of career they may be interested in, it, like a business degree, you know, they're not sure what to do. Um, there's a great free career assessment that I provide to all clients when when we talk, or even people that just do inquiry calls. It's careerexplorer.com. And okay. there you can, you know, it's like 15, 20 minutes of your time where you're answering a ton of questions. And at the end, it will tell you based on your answers and your personality, what careers would be a best fit for you. And there are several free career assessment tools on the market. You know, you don't have to pay someone to, yeah. you know, to, to take these or to tell you what you should, what you should do. Um, but that's my go-to one. Again, it, it's careerexplorer.com. Um, it's got a oh, great this interface. This is not something that you created. This is one that you really like. Right. It is not one that I created. It's one that I like. Okay. Okay. And do you really trust this? Um, why do you like this one? Because we see a lot of uh, like these yeah. kind of questionnaires. And, and I, I guess many of us don't really know if they, they are trustworthy or they, they mean something. Well, when you do them, you have to answer honestly. You don't answer what you think it's looking for. You have to answer how you truly feel. And the reason why I like this one is I've done career assessments multiple times throughout the year. And this specific one said that I should be an HR manager. And that's what I do. And so it was, uh, and, and I do it because I love it. And so I, I particularly, you know, I'm drawn to this one maybe for biased reasons, but it did, uh, it, but I feel like I was very honest in my answers. And so the more honest you are, the more accurate your uh, answers or response you're going to get. Good. Okay. We're going to link it in the description box below. So if anyone wants to try it out, then I will definitely try it out to see what I get. And yeah. So, um, Actually, I wanted to take this moment to also remind everyone to subscribe to the channel, to the YouTube channel, if you're watching this on, on YouTube, if you are also listening to this on podcast, because we are launching our podcast really soon, and we're going to put this uh, in these interviews in, in the podcast uh, version as well, then subscribe to our podcast as well. And also you can find us on Instagram and yeah, what else? We hit the bell so you can be notified whenever we, we have a new video. And yeah, I just wanted to remind you guys of that. And okay, so, um, you know, Don, I actually went online and I just typed career coach Quora And I got a bunch of questions and I just took like th two or three that I wanted to run by you to see, um, yeah, to see your answers because people are asking about this out there. Sure. So, yeah, the first one was how to find a good career coach. Yeah. So, you know, websites are like doing an online search is great, but there can be a lot of fake reviews. So the best thing to do is to reach out to your friends and your network and ask if anyone has ever worked with someone or if they know of anyone that they can refer you to. And then reach out to some of those people that may have worked with someone. So, 
you know, even taking a step back, say you find someone online that you're interested in, then see if you can find people that they've worked with and interview their clients and ask what their experience has been. Um, Some kind of like seeking reviews of people. Right. You know, because online reviews, while I do live and breathe by online reviews, like sometimes they can be inaccurate. You know, like there are, I've heard that there are places that you can pay to like review you. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to make sure, like if you go to, you know, Fiverr, which is a platform that I am, uh, that I work off of, those are a hundred percent legitimate reviews. They're not on Yelp where any anonymous person can write that, write a review. They're not on my website where I'm just quoting something. These are people who had to have paid for my service and then they leave a review after the service. Mm -hmm. So if you look on some of these bigger sites like a Fiverr uh, or uh, uh, Upwork, where they offer these types of professionals, read the reviews. Those are legitimate reviews and you can get a good good understanding of deal for who they are. Um, But it's it's also... um, important that if you decide to pick someone who you may not have any kind of connection with, you don't know anyone who they've worked with, to ask if you can do a quick phone call with them. And, you know, I do free 15 minute consultations all the time. Uh, So, you know, you have to feel comfortable with them, regardless of what you're hiring them for, you need to have, you need to feel comfortable because it is a partnership. And it's, it can be quite intimate at times, because you may, there are times where you your emotions will overtake the conversation and you may feel like crying in a session because you're dealing with a lot of stress at work and you need to know that you're comfortable work, you know, having those emotions with the person that you're working with. And that's amazing. Even the fact that you are willing to, with like go in a phone call with someone for 15 minutes to actually make sure that they want you as their coach, but also to make sure probably that you want to work with them. It's just like a chemistry thing. I, pro- I this, this is what I picture it like, no? And um, yeah, even even from that, probably you can say if it's a like a good career coach or someone that is um, caring about you and not only about getting the payment for one hour or two. Right, because I can tell you up front that most of the clients that I speak with on a consultation basis are not clients that I would proactively bring on myself uh, because we just we don't have the right fit. You know, we are, I, I can tell that you know, they may be looking for, they really aren't looking for career coaching. You know, like they're looking for someone to tell them what they need to do. Yeah. And that is... That is while that is a small part of career co- counseling, um, the big thing is me enabling you to make those decisions on your own. And if I can, and I can often tell from the first conversation from doing this so long that this is a person that is not going to be happy with anything that I share with them, or they're not going to take any kind of steps or advice. You know, like they want to go from being a teacher to an astronaut and they just want it to be done, you know, tomorrow. So knowing, you know, like their expectations are set properly um, is very important to me. Um, I don't do this for the money. I, I, I do this because I truly want to help people. Granted, it is how I make a living. Um, but I am fortunate to have clients that I don't need to take everyone on. You know, and and they and I don't need them to want, you know, like to want me to hire me, you know. So a lot of times those 15 minute free sessions end up being me telling them what they need to do without spending any money, (laughs) because what, what what they think they need is is really not what they need. What they need is just, you know, either a resume redo or a LinkedIn profile redo or I mean, oh, there are okay. just so many different things that, that that they can do without spending the money on a career coach. So they might be actually prepared for going out there and, and they maybe they even know what, what they want to be, what they want to do. They just need a quick like adjustment in, in, in the way that they're approaching the maybe the jobs, the job opportunities, like you said, like LinkedIn yes. adjustment or LinkedIn profile um, checkup and and. 
And you don't really need to go for the whole session. And the thing that you said, like, it's super important to know what you want, like to, to be self-aware of what you actually want to be. And that's the whole process that you are offering people to just help them um, realize what they want. And yeah, I didn't think about career coaching like that, actually. I thought it was more... I don't know. I think it was, some, I thought it was something different, more like you always say what, what where you, sh you should go, but I didn't know that it was so broad and, and, and round. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, people, some people know exactly what they want to do. They just need help getting there and other people have no idea what they want to do and they need to help identify hmm. what that. Yeah. So the other question that I found online was, um, yeah, well, I guess, I don't know. I'm just going to ask it. I don't know if you already like answer this, but how to know if you need a career coach? Um, it's such a personal question. You know, everybody is in a different, in a different stage, in a different state. Yeah. Um, one red flag could be that you're unhappy in what you're doing and you may have gone from, job to job and you're still unhappy doing what you're doing, uh, then that could be a good time to reach out to find out, you know, are there other opportunities out there um, that you're interested in? Um, you know, I oftentimes, you know, I take it for granted all the time. You know, I, I, I didn't know that this is what I wanted to do when I started out, but I knew what made me happy. And so if, if people don't know what makes them happy, you know, that's, that's outside of career coaching, you know, like that's more therapy session. Um, <laughs> yeah. But well, but if, maybe there is like a part of, of also career exploration that we don't really do in our lives. We just go with the flow and we don't take a step back and say, this is what I think, right? Sometimes, not everyone, but sometimes I think it happens that we just don't take a step back and say, okay, let me just try this out to see how it goes just do an internship or just to talk to people that are, have worked in that area you know yeah absolutely you know and also what are you good at you know what do you constantly yeah. get accolades for you know when i was before this when i was working with people uh as a in a manager capacity i was constantly told like you're a really great leader like you make me feel empowered to do my job And after hearing those accolades for a period of time, I started to realize like, maybe that's my niche. Like maybe I should help others. Like this is, and I like doing it. Like I was doing it just because I thought that's what I should be doing. Not because I was not really because I was seeing the results, even though my teams were very high performing and I was getting good results from them. I was doing it because I enjoy doing it. And, and I knew I was fortunate in the beginning of my career to work for a manager who empowered me. She let me so make yeah. my own decisions and she supported my decisions as long as she felt like I was coming from a good place. And that was so important in my development as a professional. And so I've taken that in every job that I've ever had and even in my career today to I want people to feel empowered and I want to pass that along. Yeah. And I guess this is like you said, this was something that you were getting from everyone and it was something that came natural to you. So probably this is what we also have to identify what comes natural to us. What do we like? What makes us happy? And, and you help as a career coach, you help people get there and, and realize the final, yeah, like the, the main thing that they want to yeah. do. So I have one, like a, a, a final one, and I, I really want to ask you this one because you mentioned Upwork and also um, uh, Fiverr.com. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I've used Fiverr.com and I think it's really good. And um, But I didn't know that you could find career coaches there. I mean, I was surprised to hear that. So where else can we find uh, a career coach? Oh, gosh. I mean... Uh... LinkedIn is a great place. So LinkedIn has what's called ProFinder. So you go on, it costs you nothing. You simply uh, say you're looking for a professional uh, 
resume writer, LinkedIn optimiz- optimizer, or career coach. When you put that in, it sends it out to all of the LinkedIn pros who are listed in your area. And five, you'll have an opportunity to get five responses back from uh, the different professionals. So they'll send you a proposal and explain like what they do, what their services are, how you can learn more. Uh, I'm listed as a pro on LinkedIn Pro Finder. So I include, you know, every, every inquiry. If you want to do a 15 minute free consultation, we can, you know, sign up here. Um, so, but honestly, I think that that one has grown exponentially over the last year. Uh, I didn't know it existed actually. I get at least a hundred inquiries a day from LinkedIn. Yes. And and there are not enough pros that are located in, say, uh, Kansas. So even mm-hmm. though I'm in Los Angeles, I will still get their requests because there aren't enough professionals that are on the platform. But I have a question. Like, is it only for people that are LinkedIn certified or for any career that you claim you're a pro in? Uh, for like for any services side? that you're, yeah. So on, no, so LinkedIn um, ProFinder, you can be looking for a wedding photographer. You could be looking okay. for, I mean, any, almost any kind of service. So it's, it's really basically like a Fiverr or an Upwork. Yeah. It just ran through LinkedIn. The best part is it doesn't cost you anything to use the service where if you use Fiverr and Upwork, you're paying a percent of, you know, the to Fiverr or Upwork. LinkedIn isn't taking any money from you as a person who is okay. looking. You, you get to you get free uh, career help. Wow, that's amazing! I didn't know that. Well, yes. if I find the link, probably I'm gonna find the link. I'm gonna put it below as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna find it. So, okay. So um, now that we have talked about all what you do, what a career coach does, um, where can we find you? Where can people find you? And where what can they expect? to 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 find on your website for area um, talent and and everything tell us about that you can find me at areatalent.net on social media on twitter and instagram at area talent i'm also uh facebook don pippin uh i'm also uh on linkedin uh it's don pippin on linkedin i do have an area talent business page but it's really um and that's there for an optimization purposes, which is what I work with on clients for. Um, but I use my my main profile to answer inquiries. Okay. So if anyone wants to reach out to you, then they can do it there. And on LinkedIn, for example, it's better to do it on, on your personal page. for them. Yes, I, absolutely. Send me a connection request. I am more than happy to connect with anyone. Great. So um, I, I also want to take this time to remind everyone to subscribe and hit like if you like this video so far. And also comment below if you're thinking to get a career coach, if you have thought about it. And yeah, whatever you want to comment below. Go ahead. <laughs> and um, OK, Don. So if people cannot afford a career coach and they're desperate to do something and or, or to find out, what the the right career is for them. Um, what can they do by themselves? You know, almost everything you can do by yourself. Um, you know, Google is such a powerful tool. Um, the pro, the yeah. most people hire us because they, uh, as, especially if it's if there is if it's for a resume, they they just don't want to do it. You know, so but when it comes to career coaching and identifying what you want to do next. Um, If you don't know what you want to do, take those career assessments online. They're free. There are so many of them. The career explorer is just one. Uh, If you know what you want to do, but you're just not sure how to get there, do Coursera or edX, which are all like offer tons of free courses that you, that are available to you. Some of them are Harvard extension courses so you can you can get a, a certif- certification from Harvard for free. So do the like there's so many free things. 
Um, volunteer if you know what you want to do, but you just want to get in front of someone who um, may have some pull or have the ability to, to influence a decision maker in an organization that you are interested in, volunteer with those organizations. I do a lot of volunteering, um, but most of my volunteering is where I'm providing free career coaching and free uh, resume writing for underserved communities. Um, but I've still made some really great connections through that. Yeah, so, it's a lot of visibility that you get out there. So yeah. Right. Um, and there are a lot of internship programs. If you are fortunate to be in a situation where maybe you have either time that you can do internships or you don't need the money per se, yeah. um, like do an internship in the program that you are interested in working in. Yeah. That's great. Great advice. And um, what do you think about uh, reaching out to professionals directly and just talking with them about their experience and, and asking questions? Um, and yeah, I know that sometimes professionals are already really busy and they just don't want to talk to anyone that just reaches out. <laughs> But um, yeah, what do you think about that? Uh, that's a great question. It's actually one of the steps that we do in career coach sessions. Uh, we formulate plans on one, who to contact, and then two, how to contact them. So there's, it's important that whoever you identify that you want to reach out to, that you have a plan and you don't just send either uh, an in-mail through Uh, LinkedIn, like a connection request with no message, or just a general message where it makes it sound like you're looking for something from them. So you want to personalize the message. You want to target who you're sending it to. And taking a step back, the first thing that you want to do is uh, if you're interested in working at Honda, Don't look for recruiters at Honda to reach out to. Bypass the recruiter. You know, like, and okay. I say that as I say that as a recruiter. <laughs> so we only have so much pull, right? Like, we can get your resume in front of someone, but we have absolutely right. no impact whether or not they can they will be able to hire you or they will make that hiring decision. So bypass us and go straight to the hiring manager. So find out who the hiring manager is for this position, and send them a message. So if they have an open job, then it's okay to talk, let them know you're reaching out about this position that is open. But if you are seeking out someone for a potential future job, you want to build that relationship with them first. So you don't want to send an in-mail where you're asking for help getting a job there. You want to ask, you want to ask them, what, what is their experience like working at Honda? How have they enjoyed, like, how, how did they start out? Um, like trying their, to pick their brains on what they already experienced. Right. right. Okay. So, and then once you get that conversation going, there will be a time where it feels much more natural to provide your resume or to send, ask to connect on LinkedIn or let them know what your background is and why you're asking. But the goal is that you are asking these questions and getting to know them to a point where they're going to be asking you. They're going to say, hey, would you mind sending me your resume? You know, like, wow. and, and so we it's want a strategy. It's almost like inception. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's a, uh, it's reverse, you know, like we don't want to, we don't want to be the one yeah. saying hire me. We want you to be the one to say hire me. Wow. Okay. It's a really good tip. I mean, advice, I would say, because sometimes we just think, oh, let's just reach out. Hi, you know, I'm looking for a job. Eh, wrong. Um, or I don't know, just like a generic message, like you said, like, hi, I'm Veronica and I, I'm trying to be, I don't know, this and that. Can you help me? Wrong. Right. So just don't be so aggressive i would say you would say probably too like just try to build a relationship and that's that's it with every single relationship that we have in life as well we just don't yeah. approach people on the street like that <laughs> right yeah i mean if someone came up to you and said what do you have that you can offer me like you would look at them like um nothing nothing <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah totally so let's be a bit more thoughtful with our connections online as well. Yes. 
So, um, Don, I just want to like maybe hear from you. What's the big difference between having a career coach and trying to do it by yourself? If people are trying to decide, should I get it? Should I not get it? Most clients that I hear from, it's that their comfort level and their self-esteem and confidence has been boosted and increased. You know, they feel like they can go into that interview and knock it out of the park. And that's because as a career coach, we are your biggest advocate. You know, we are cheering you on. And I mean, even if it's selfishly, like I want them to win the job because then it makes me feel like I've done my job. But I know in the end that every client gets the job because of them. You know, they got the, especially when it comes to, um, a resume clients, you know, I can get them a resume that's going to get them seen, but it's their job to sell themselves in an interview. So I don't take credit for anything beyond getting you seen. Once you get that, once you get that interview, that's all you. So, you know, with it, the, and even me, like I am awful at interviewing. I'll be the first person to say it. I am awful. Yeah, like how awful I, I, yeah, I because I I can never think of things off the top of my head. You know, when someone asks me a question, I'm like a deer in headlights. And then when it's I'm done, yeah. I I uh, do then I you come up it. with all the great things. And in the yes, end, then yeah. I come up with all these great things. Like, oh, I should have mentioned this. You know, so and and I I have overcome that over the like most recent years. Um, granted I'm not interviewing anymore like myself. Um, but I have had to do some, like just last week I, uh, applied to this volunteer situation. And so they did an interview with me and it was such a, it was a much different experience for me because I'm much more comfortable and confident. Um, and I think that's just from rehearsing and practicing, you know, like, um, and when you hire a a career coach, sometimes you just need that discipline to either do an assignment, uh, knowing that you're going to be held accountable for it. And you just need that person to hold you accountable. Uh, and they're going to be doing, uh, interview prep with you and preparing you for potential questions that are going to be asked. The more prepared you are, the more confident you are going into those sessions. So while, Hiring a career coach definitely boosts your confidence. It's really the activities and actions that you're doing in those sessions that's boosting your confidence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the training. And um, also in the sessions, probably if it's like any coach, then um, you might do something little that's wrong and you get corrected in the, in the moment. So you already, you are getting this constant training. And probably when you're just trying by yourself, um, you have to, you will make some mistakes during your interviews and then you will realize. So probably right. you would have to take longer to just um, realize what those mistakes are or or you might not even realize until, yeah, you didn't get the job. So um, maybe it takes a bit longer. And of course, it's always valuable to have someone by your side that knows what they're doing and that has experience and and, and knows how to guide you. So, yeah, I think probably this, those are the, the, the main things and, and it depends on the people to know, to, to decide if they really need the, the career coach uh, experience or yeah, if they just think they can do it by themselves. It's like you said, it's a really personal decision. Yes, it is. And it's, uh, I do feel though that, you know, everybody leaves sessions with different feelings and different um, uh, what they get out of it. But I can tell you that going into a session with an open mind uh, mm-hmm. is highly advisable. It really is the only way that you can go into it. Um, it's not a you're not seeing a you know a crazy shrink, and you're not you know it's it's nothing like that. You know, it's uh, we are truly here to help you. Um, and guide you to meeting your goals and, and you may need help even deciding what those goals are. And that's maybe where you start with a career professional. Yeah. Yeah. So Don, um, 
apart from you, where can people like which which kind of platforms that you might know? Like for example, the the this place where you the website where you mentioned that they could do this. Um, it's like a questionnaire, like a assessment. Um, apart from that, where can they find platforms or books? Maybe you can you recommend some books that you have read about uh, careers and how to find the right career for you. Or maybe even people that you follow because are, are, they are inspiring for you. Um, what, what can you recommend for for anyone that's watching and listening? Yeah, so LinkedIn is a great platform that has a lot of influencers on it. So everybody hears about influencers on um, on Instagram or TikTok. But there are also for us nerds in the career professional, there are influencers on on LinkedIn. So some One of the ones that I love to follow is Simon Sinek. I'm not, are you familiar with him? I've heard him some, like a lot, but I don't really follow him, but yeah. I know that I have to start following him. Yeah, he's amazing. And not just for career guidance, but just leadership coaching and just inspiration. Like he's, he's really great and he's super smart. Um, but he has a book at, called Find Your Why. And it's a really great resource to and it's literally what it is find your why like why are you here why are you why do you want to do what you want to do wow. yeah um and he has that a great podcast so powerful. the the yeah. find your why because uh, i mean every time that you want to just give up you just remember the why <laughs> yes exactly and he has a, a podcast called a bit of optimism uh okay. that you can you know apple podcasts is primarily what he promotes, but it's on any podcast platform. Okay. Um, and there are, uh, if you, professional groups uh, on LinkedIn, like you can search up recruiter groups, you can search up uh, career coaches, and the top influencers are going to pull up there. Uh, in general, I, I follow a few, um, but every career coach has a different idea of what they, of of what works based on their experience. Right. Yeah. So I personally don't, I wouldn't wreck it. I wouldn't give any names of the ones that I follow <laughs> just because yeah. everyone yeah, has, it, it, it's so strange, you know, be, and one of the biggest complaints that you'll see from people that are following these people is that, well, such and such said we should do this or such and such said we should do that. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, everybody has different opinions on, what the best next best step is for someone. And to be honest, none of them are wrong. They're all right. It's just different ways of looking at it. But from a career seeker, it can be confusing. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah and I guess this is, um, you have to be real careful also, like in this sense, when you're also Googling stuff, you have to be really careful with what you're taking for yourself And, and what do you think it's valuable for you as an individual? So, yeah. Yes. Good. Okay, let me see. We are done. Yeah. Do you have anything else that you wanna that you wanna say? No? I can go to the closing part. You wanna talk um, about it? Yeah, no. We, we can go to the closing. Yeah. Okay, great. So Okay, so I have reached the end of my questions and thank you so much, Don, for giving me this this time to chat and to talk about your career, but mainly about what career coaches do and, and how people can can approach their their career um yeah, discovery, I would say, like to discover the right career for them. I mean, I think we have talked about really interesting things. You have really opened my mind to what a career coach does and yeah well for everyone that's listening and watching uh, you know already that you can find all the 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 resources that we have talked about you i'm gonna put them in the description box below i'm also gonna put all the information about dawn there and you can find them um yeah just below here the the video and also in the platform that you're watching this on and remember to subscribe to like the video to hit the bell to be notified the next time that we are uploading something and and yeah comment below whatever you want to comment and also i'm really interested in knowing if if you are now thinking to get a career coach or 
or if you have thought about it in the past. And yeah, again, Don, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was really fun and interesting. Thank you, Veronica. I, I, I enjoyed it myself. <laughs> okay, see you next time, everyone. Bye-bye.